And now, Jabroni Studios, in association with Big Herm Productions, is proud to present to you, recording from an undisclosed location in Oakdale, Connecticut, it's Chris Burns, it's Chris Lynch, this is Dysfunction Junction. Welcome everybody to Dysfunction Junction, episode two. We are glad to be here today. Thank you for listening, thank you for joining, and thank you to everybody who listened to episode one, part one, and part two. My name is Chris Burns, my co-host to my left. It is Chris Lynch. And the man with the plan, the man that's in charge and as large as a barge, not anymore. He's <laughs> dropping that in LBs. He is Michael Herman. How you doing, everybody? Big Herm in the house. Guys, fantastic week one. I enjoyed it. I've heard good things from people who have listened to it. If you guys want to chime in and tell us what you think, the email is junctiondysfunction at gmail.com. Send us anything, critiques, comments. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Give us show ideas. That's the place to do it. Uh, Once again, we have a great topic this week, but first... We want to take a couple of minutes each to go over a quick hit. We're going to start with the man of the hour, the Tower of Power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, Chris Lynch. Good evening, everybody. How are you today? I'm fantastic, I other didn't... than the uh, little uh, bullshit I dealt with earlier. But anyway. It's not murder if you don't get caught. Well, true. True. It's, it's not a felony if you don't get caught. So <laughs> We'll talk more about that next week. <laughs> <laughs> next week, that's a different topic. Yes, um, it is. So... Watching the news last night about this $1.9 trillion spending package uh, passed on the veil of to combat virus in the downturn based upon the virus. So I am very, very, very surprised that this package actually passed and went through and got voted in. Um, I'm going to read a couple quick, quick quotes here. Uh, package includes more than $400 billion to combat the pandemic directly. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. <clears throat> We've already had instituted for the last year free vaccination sites. Mm-hmm. And now my wife just got her third shot last the booster. week. The booster last yeah. week. I understand that the, the, the mindset behind this is to get more people vaccinated. However, comma. If you do not wish to get vaccinated, that's on you. That's your decision. And you know what? I'll respect that decision. You can't for you. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can drown him in the fucking pond. But this, I, I always the, say, I always say, you can lead an idiot to information, but you can't make him think. Well, and you can't make them understand the the, the meaning behind what they're trying to do here. Correct. So. Um, Another part of this is also they're putting restrictions on if you don't get either your complete vaccination by, let's say, I think it was January 3rd of 2022. If you're a state worker, a education educator, uh, there's a couple of uh, healthcare workers. Mm-hmm. The companies stand to face $15,000 fines per day per person. Yep. And these are companies over 100 employees. Yes. <clears throat> so now you have to think about the companies under 100 employees. They're still going to get fined. The, the fine may be smaller. However, comma, again, <laughs> I hate saying that, but it's... I love it. it, it it's, it's... Where are they going to come up with this, this fine money? We already, took a, we already took a huge hit during COVID with restaurants and fast food and where restaurants are struggling to keep employees employed or get people to show up on time every day. So they restricted their hours. They've, they've reassessed what days are going to be open and they're doing limited menus and they're doing limited hours. So if you can't, if you can't provide to your customer, how are you going to pay a fine at the back end. The answer is you can't. And, and and if you don't mind, I have a thought about this, and it's threefold. There's three things that I think this infrastructure bill passing is going to do. One, it creates the, the ideology that it's okay to stay home and not work. We're creating zombies of the state. You know, it, there, there's more opportunity right now to get a job because of things are reopening. And you have the opportunity. You just don't want to do it. Second, they're devaluing, with all these stimulus packages, someone has to pay for it, and you're going to pay for it in taxes, and you're going to pay for it on the shelves. 
you know, milk might cost two seventy nine today, but in a year from now it could be four seventy nine. You're gonna pay for it with your wallet. And three, they're trying to devalue the I think the Democrats are trying to devalue the dollar so much that we all become zombies of the state. Here here's your here's your porridge and your government cheese. Move along, thank you, fuck you bye. A friend of mine posted a picture of uh, the Waterford um Walmart had zero refrigerated food on the shelf. Yeah. Um, and I were, went and bought chicken wings this weekend, and, and it was tough to find. And there were no signs saying, hey, be patient, we're going through a re- re- remodel. So the supply chain is broken because fuel costs money. Mm-hmm. And that, that fuel cost has gone up so much for these big diesel diesel boats to get the shit over to us on cargo ships. We can't get the stuff we need. So, I mean, uh, you can th- you can throw a lot of money on the at the wall in whatever sticks, where do you, wh- wh- what's your priority? Do you want to take care of the people in your, in your country and take care of people in your state and take care of what we are necessities? And that's what, what kills me is gas, milk, eggs, everything has gone up in price. Mm-hmm. I get it. I understand it, but it's perpetuating this, this whole hysteria of, Oh my God, I got to go buy out all the toilet paper, all the hand sanitizer, all the milk. You know, I own all the cheese type thing. Mm-hmm. It, it, again, you're like you said, zombie state. That's eventually what it's going to become. Hashtag let's go, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking doddering old fool. Let's, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. My quick hit is going to be, you know, you know me, I'm a big music fan. People send me videos all the time. And the one video I saw last week... And I, it's been around for months, but I don't follow pop rock, if you will. But I saw a video of Miley Cyrus, a uh, an artist who I have little to no interest in, other than sexually, singing Heart of Glass as if she wrote it and she felt it. She absolutely annihilated that song. And I'm a huge fan of the 80s you know, pop rock because I was... I don't know, eight years old when that song came out, and it was fun. I sent you guys a message, and I'm going to embarrass myself in front of our dear (laughs) listeners. Because Miley Cyrus enunciates, she cured one of my biggest misheard lyric mysteries of all time, where the line where she says, uh, Mucho mistrust, love's gone behind. I was... Today, last week, years old, when I learned that was the line, because for f- almost 40 years, I heard Lutheran Church, not far behind. And all of you will hear that line listening to that song going forward. It's fucking Hofstyle all over again, kids. And if there's, you don't know fucking Hofstyle, I'll be sharing it to the show. Go ahead, Mike. There's a bathroom on the right. There is a bathroom on the right. Bingo Jed had a light on. Bingo Jed had a light oh, on. Oh, my Lord. You know, we're going to do a misheard lyrics episode at some point. But th- the point I'm trying to make is... If you love 80s pop music and you don't like some of today's, you know, over auto tuned, everything sounds the same bullshit, watch that video, any version of Miley Cyrus singing that song, but I'm going to throw the iHeartRadio festival version out there. She did it with just, her voice was amazing. Her stage presence was there. The best thing I saw was she had the attitude. She worked that stage as if she was born on it. And I know you and I, Chris, had a, had a conversation about it. I want you to weigh in on that, about what you thought watching this and hearing her just absolutely, I don't, I don't even know, other, other than saying she owned that song. So at, as we have talked before, I, during her Hannah Montana phase, I understand Hannah Montana is a fictional character. Fictional character. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Disney product that was produced to get, get her some popularity. A vehicle. A vehicle to get her onto her career path. Um, didn't really have a lot of respect for her. And then when she transitioned from Hannah Montana into Miley Cyrus, she went through that period where people were criticizing her for being over overly sexualized, um, acting a slut, doing just things that are you saying this because she started out as Hannah Montana and went Cor- through it? Yes, because, because Lady Gaga w- has been Lady Gaga forever, and nobody is calling her a slut except me. Well, Lady Gaga is basically a Madonna clone. Yeah, sorry, but anyway, darn near close. Um, so anyway, she goes through this transition from going to 
teeny bop pop star to an adult trying to put, put a new footprint on our career. All right, so, so here's, a, here's a comma, and the next thing is, this is the new path of my career. It's the Britney syndrome. Right, and that, that's another, uh, actually a really good topic. Britney started out cutesy and singing these power pop songs, and then I'm a slave for you. And in, in, it, in, in the shit, current shit she's going through with her father, the estate, blah, 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 whatever. That's a topic for a different day. But once Miley started getting criticized for trying to establish a new identity, <clears throat> I think her talent and her, 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 her pipes got better. Wrecking Ball is a fucking fantastic song. I, I'm okay with it. I, I, I've, I've listened to it a million times. That is the point in her career where she is, is putting her foot down saying, fuck you. This is the direction I want to go. I'm not Hannah Montana anymore. I'm a grown ass woman. Mm -hmm. If I want to take a, do a topless photo shoot or dress like a dress in a fucking thong on stage, I will photograph it for free. <laughs> let her do her thing. And every performance thereafter. And when you sent me that link, I had seen the link before you sent it to me, but she is, she's proving her talent. She's got pipes. She's very intelligent. I've heard her on Howard Stern numerous times in, on interview. Mm -hmm. She's got a really good, just a good trajectory for her. Yeah, she's had some bumps and, bumps and bruises along, along the road to where she is right now. But you know what? I, I think she's establishing herself to be a role model for people who go through that Disney syndrome, is what I call it. Yeah. You had Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears. Um, Christina. Christina Aguilera. All those kids from that generation in the early 90s who tried to establish themselves as an adult got criti criticized for it. Oh, JT's talking about sex. Well, you know what? This is what he wants to, what, this is what he wants to sing and about. And as he's grown into a grown man, I don't give a shit. He's in his what fucking 40s about. now. Exactly. Come on, man. Give, give the guy some breathing room. I'm going to leave it on this, and I want you guys to mull this point before we throw it to Big Herm real quick. <clears throat> Listening to her sing that song and the heart and the soul and the rasp, Right now, I am likening Miley Cyrus to very early Stevie Nicks before Stevie found her voice and became Stevie Nicks in big, bold letters. Stevie Nicks talking about her ex-husband and ex-boyfriend. While her ex-boyfriend plays on the fucking record. Yes, exactly. Done and done. Fuck you. This is how I feel about you. Goodbye. There you go. And uh, thank you for indulging me for talking about my future ex-wife, Mrs. Miley Cyrus Burns. And we're going to go a little, little change of pace here. We're get we're five-minute quick hit for uh, Big Herm over here. He's got something he wants to talk about. Let's do it. What is up, everybody? Uh, listen, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit um, about the Travis Scott issue. Uh, over the weekend, there was a concert in Texas, uh, Astro World 2021. Um, there was some things that happened during the concert. Uh, there was a, a first of all the when the gates were opened, the the concert attendees trampled a bunch of people and broke down gates and they wrecked the place like a bunch of animals. All right, so that's how the event was started. Um, but later on in the evening, because it was like an all day all evening festival thing. Chris, take your pill. Right? Uh, we're old. What do you want? Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> later on during the show, when Travis Scott came on stage, there was there was a surge. Now, I'm not going to blame him for the surge. That happens. However, at, at, at points throughout the show, and we've seen this through uh, YouTube videos and uh, videos posted online from actual concert goers as well as aerial footage and whatnot. Um, we see that there are people in distress and uh, I watched a video today where two people climbed a stage to try and tell uh, some of the production crew that somebody was dead in the crowd. There was somebody dead that there were people getting hurt that somebody needed to do something and I watched the production crew literally just turn around and ignore them. They didn't get up a radio and they weren't like, uh, security over on the West stage. We've got something going on. I've got people telling me there is a dead person over here. Can we have somebody check it out? Um, they literally didn't care. It was not 
until after the eight people had died, until after over a hundred people had been injured during this event, and there were ambulances that had made their way through the crowd to help these people out, that he finally kind of begrudgingly stopped his concert. So here's my question. Mm -hmm. Travis Scott is kind of really big with all the younger people, with the the woke folk. Um, I just want to throw in, I was... All right. Two days ago, years old, um, when I actually heard of Travis Scott. Right, because we're not woke. We yeah, sleep, me too. We sleep like motherfuckers. I'm too busy working and Hashtag shit. Hashtag me too. Um, but he's real big with that woke crowd with the rap. I'm not big on the mumble rap thing. I'm a DJ professionally. Just not my cup of tea. Not saying he's not an, a good artist. Just saying it's not my cup of tea. With everything that's going on with the woke folk nowadays and how how big they are on just so much as hurting a particular group's feelings or or somebody being overly sensitive and you having to allow that to happen, why is it okay and why are we not just completely canceling this guy immediately after the complete disregard for human life and 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 human health at his show? I'd like to I'd like to start the question and i'm going to request a two minute overtime i'll give you two minutes to, to get all of our points right. in That's Absolutely. um yesterday i'm watching the final race of the season with my friend bill my friend bill roots for chase elliott and we had a discussion about you know chase elliott and his misdeeds during the year not that he went out and killed people but he's made mistakes and the chase elliott fans don't want to acknowledge it so when i'm talking to him i have to constantly qualify you know you know, when I talk to Chase Elliott fans, oops, not you, Bill, but the the painting with the broad brush, the the universal you, the royal you, and that's kind of what we have to do now today. So you know, the woke folk doesn't feel hurt. Ah, poor baby, fucking get a get a life, get a helmet, get over it. Words, certain words hurt. Not every fucking word hurts. Going back to Travis Scott. In the way you just described everything, again, I don't know everything. I got a cliff note version from Lynch last night, and it sounds like there was a breakdown in communication from the people that should have been rushing the stage that work for Travis Scott, that should have you know, come out, put hands on his shoulders and go, you need to stop. There are people dying out here. Your point that you made on the way over here, and it'll be the first time Lynch hears it, is people are likening it to Woodstock 99. No, motherfucker. Woodstock 99 was man's inhumanity toward man. This is a point where communicate, in my opinion, and I, I wasn't there, I could be wrong, where a stage manager, a road manager, a security guard, a cop, you know there were all of these things there, should have walked up onto that stage and or somebody pulls the plug, and when Travis Scott turns around and goes, what the fuck, why aren't we playing? Then you find out, and we'll be right back. Let's take care of this before we move on with the show. Chris, please. So, yeah, I agree. It was total lack of communication between um, his staff, the security staff for the, the, for the venue, cops. Um, they're saying eight people died. Right, and hundreds, and hundreds others were trampled and injured. Right. Um, leading into that, prior to that, rather, is that uh, during a 2017 Astro World, <clears throat> uh, the same type of thing happened with his performance? And so th this is repetitive now. It, it, it it's right. It, no, no, this was featured in Rolling Stone. I I have not researched deep enough to make sure that it's an accurate statement. Okay, but I'm just throwing out what I've read thus far. Um, uh, New York Times making note of us, his 2015 guilty plea for reckless endangerment after he encouraged fans to climb security barricades and safety experts argue analysis, arguing that the deaths were preventable being reported on in the L LA Times. Mm -hmm. So his blatant disregard for the safety of his fans, fuck you, I'm going to do my show. I'm going to, I got to counter that. I have to counter that because your job as a performer is to perform, not to watch every member of the crowd. Agreed. Somebody should have somebody but on it, his team agreed. should have told him. But but that's my part that's leading into my next point. That's a complete lack of communication between his security staff, his personal security staff, even his road crew. His road crew, somebody on fucking stage. 
the drummer, the 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 guy playing the, the fucking beatbox. Anybody with a radio on There you them. go. Exa- well, anybody with a voice. Hey, dude, this is fucking going on right in front of you. Yep. Ask any performer. They're looking at maybe <clears throat> the, the front row. They're me- it's mentioned in songs all the time. Out, Bob Seger, out there in the spotlight, you are a million miles away. My job is to perform for you and give you what you came for. So he can't be scanning the crowd looking for all of this shenanigans going on. Somebody needed to get up there and tell him. But to my point, if you see it happening right in front of you in the front row, that's that's where you need to to address it immediately. And like I said, Dave Grohl did that at a Foo Fighters concert and said, get this motherfucker out of here. He's starting but to fight. But he saw it. He saw it. Exactly. And he, he was being responsible and, and looking out for the safety of his fans. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm sure Road Crew probably alerted him as well that there was shit going down. But basically, my, my point is, is that it, it's a cycle of repetition of that type of behavior, and it's tolerated by your security staff. <clears throat> All right, you want to wrap this up? I'm gonna. I would just like to say that we're sending uh, 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 our condolences out to all of the victims of the Astro World 2021 uh, event in Houston. And uh, I hope we get to the bottom and find out what happened and all of those that are legally uh, liable and responsible get what they deserve. Yeah, let, let the system play its course and hopefully the, the right people get, get responsible. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment with tonight's main topic. And welcome back to Dysfunction Junction. Once again, if you have show ideas, critiques, criticisms, or you just want to send us money, junctiondysfunction at gmail.com. And this week, we have... If you're a younger person, listen, this is going to happen to you someday. If you're in our age range, we are all knocking on 50's door. You'll, you're going to enjoy this. You're going to you're going to identify with what we're going to say. If you're a woman listening to this show and you want to know how to pick and choose and how to critique your man because he's going through these things, this is for you. We're calling this the trials and tribulations of men over 40, or let me tell you about my favorite antacid. This this fell on our lap during pre-production when we were putting the show together, and we just got to start to talk about aches and pains and different things, and producer Big Herm, who's going to lead off, uttered the phrase, I have a favorite antacid. So... This was your baby, kid. Why don't you rock it to sleep all right, right all now? All right, all right, all right. So, so we it was a few weeks ago, and we were just shooting the shit after a recording session and a test, and we were talking about just we've all known each other for long periods of time. Chris and I went to high school together. Uh, Chris and Chris have known each other for a long time. Um, there is a lot of history going on in in. In the group, here. and we can all be triangulated to each other at some point in time, whether we know it or not. Right. right. So, we were all talking about things and getting older, and Chris was talking about something about Blue Emu. Yes, about his his favorite <laughs> his favorite analgesic rub. All okay, right. If you and don't mind, I, I just have to say, it. I can I found it online. I can get it through Amazon, but when I can't find the theragesic, I would go with the Blue Emu and. I learned I was old by watching one of my childhood heroes do this commercial, NASCAR champion Rusty Wallace, talking about Blue Emu, it works fast and you don't stink. And I, I learned on the, I was that day years old when I learned I was old. Continue. Please. See, all right, so he was discussing that he couldn't find it and he liked it and, you know, his aches and pains. And I was like, wait a minute. Do you, do you, do you guys want to hear something something kind of messed up but funny as hell? And they were like, "All right, all right, so all right, so so here it is, and here's and here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I am forty eight years old, and I have a favorite antacid. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of antacids on the market, but." The Alka Seltzer fruit chews. I gotta be honest, they're like eating middle aged menthos. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so it literally comes down to now where I'm almost fifty, and yes, I will only tolerate one brand of antacid because, yep, 
They're my favorite. <laughs> okay, and then to your point, and and, and throwing therapeutic in there, you know, you you know, Mike, that I have had back <clears throat> issues since about the age of twenty five. The, yeah, there was always there was a uh, there was a always a tub of Flexol something. Four fifty four on the coffee table, yep. always, or the cheap blue shit from Shoprite. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, I found this wonder product called Theragesic. One thin layer is good, but two thin layers are better. And if you do three thin layers, you're doing jumping jacks and push-ups for the rest of the fucking day. It's that fucking good. It also, and you find out many other uses, like I'm prone to headaches before bed. I don't know why. I don't get headaches often, but like right before bed, I'll get a headache. Pull all that shit on your forehead, little on your temples. Headache's gone in 30 minutes. It's that fucking good. It's not head on. You all remember that shit, right? <laughs> Head on, Robert. Apply it directly to your Apply forehead. Apply it directly to your forehead. <laughs> Tried that shit. I like the active on that. Worked like a charm. But Theragesic, that was that's my go-to. And however many weeks ago we were talking about the Blue Emu and Mike gave us that gem of, I have a favorite Tantacid. <laughs> I couldn't find Theragesic anymore. But thank you, Rusty Wallace, you jufro heaven motherfucker. Great race car driver, but... Totally ruined my childhood. I went out and bought the Blue Emu. It does work fast, and I don't stink. Not stinking is very important. Well, you remember, like, some of these joint creams all these years always smelt like the, the elderly ward at the hospital. Well, it smelt like um, menthol. menthol. Yes. And just, just like, it smelt like death. Yeah. When you walk into a hospital in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Menthol. That's all you smelled mm-hmm. was that menthol smell, that, that cleaner smell. Yeah. That just like, oh my God, I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> and my nostrils are fucking burning. Now you say that leading into my point. Okay. Vicks Vapor Rub. Love it. And people are This like, is how we know we're old because I already have something to say about Vicks Vapor Rub when he's done. My younger I don't I don't know I want to say friends, but my younger acquaintances, when I say vapor rub, they're like, What's what is that? I'm like, oh, you got to get yourself the vapor rub humidifier. Put a little bit in there. Mm-hmm. You got a cold, loosens that shit right up in your chest. Put- I think we all had one in our rooms when we were eight. <laughs> I did. Every one of our moms had one. Come on, baby, I'm gonna get the vaporizer. <laughs> Put a little dab right here underneath your nostrils. <laughs> rub it on your chest. Rub it on your feet. <laughs> Put some socks on. Yep. You know uh- what else that's good for? This is how old we are now. If you get a little bit of toe fungus, put that on the toe fungus, knocks it the fuck oh, out. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, I happen to suffer a little toe fungus on the big toe. Me Emma too. Call, Emma calls it the yucky toe since she was little. <laughs> Dad's got a yucky toe. She's 14 now. She still calls it the yucky toe. Toby you Bryant. Put, put, Toby but <laughs> Thanks, Tobo Cop. <laughs> and I put a little bit of that on the toe fungus every couple of days. It takes it right away. But then again, whoop, here it comes again. Doesn't matter, but that's how you know, Vapor Rub, a fantastic <laughs> product that kids today know nothing about, except if they watch YouTube videos of the chick from England who eats it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so full disclosure, doing the toe fungus thing about two weeks ago, and I'd seen that video about a year ago, and I was looking at my finger, I'm looking at the tub, I'm looking at the finger, looking at the tub, look at the finger. I'm like, oh no. Dipped it in, a little dabby on the tongue. Nope, never again. Fuck you. I don't know how this bitch eats it by the spoonful, but... Yeah, that, that's nope. wrong on a whole different level. <laughs> but that's that's today, man. Ugh. You, you, know, you know what else I noticed? Go ahead. <clears throat> I'm saying sayings that I never thought I would fucking say. Watch this. Heard. <laughs> no, not that one. That one's... I'm a chef, so I say that for everything. Okay, just checking. No, we're talking about things like um, like old people sayings. I was having a talk with Jennifer the other day, and um, something, we were in the conversation, and out of nowhere, like, I've been saying it my entire life, I whipped out, well, that's just a bunch of malarkey right there. <laughs> Oh my god, that hurts! I, yeah, I, I feel like, your pain. Because... That's li- like that's where I'm at. Like, just fuck you and your malarkey. For real, she's like, did you just? What did you just say? Fuck you and I'm your like, hogwash. I'm not dealing with any of that malarkey. And she's like, don't give me none of that jibber jabber. Oh, for real? Well, that was you, the jibber jabber. Yeah, with 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 Emma. Yeah, don't give me none of that jibber jabber. What? She my- wants to know who you are, where you're from. What are you saying? Right? 
when like, she was little, we've all been told not to back talk. And as she's learning to to find her voice and, and get her voice out and be able to ask questions if she doesn't know something, I said something about go in your room and don't give me any back talk. She turned around. She goes, so you only want front talk? <laughs> and that's when you realize I'm fucking old. I now have to explain to a four-year-old at the time what back talk is. You're talking back. Here's your objective. Go finish the objective. Don't talk back to me. Do not. Don't. don't if I hear anything other than yes, Dad, this conversation's a joke. I don't want any back talk. So you only want front talk? I don't even know what the fuck that means, but I, it made it, sense to her. Well, in fourteen year old's mind, you say back talk. Well, that there, was a four year old at the time. Oh, okay, but even even so, now she just tells me to go fuck myself. Brenton, Brenton was six. We're sitting in the car. We're listening to a song. Something happened. Somewhere in the conversation, I went, Brenton, I am not old. He looked at me and said, well, you're not new. <laughs> okay. Brenton won. Michael, nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, do, how am I supposed... Uh, how do you react to that? I must, I, you're right. I'm not new, yeah. but I'm still your dad, and I'll whoop your ass. That's yeah. right. I brought you in this life. I'll take you out. Right. Um, going back to your antacid. Um, watch the last race of the season yesterday. If you want to hear all about it, Wednesday night live on Facebook is the Speedway review. We're going to talk all three championship races, and we made wings, buffalo garlic wings which are my all-time favorite regular mild buffalo for the couple of wusses that were there and in the process of making these wings bill and his his wonderful wife gina shows me this bottle it says i bought this for bill online it comes from australia and i turned the label and it's called shit your pants <laughs> i said you have my attention let's do it so she made about a half dozen wings with this shit your pants sauce <clears throat> grab me a diaper first <laughs> no, I'm going to give you the straight skinny on this. Uh, first bite, it's the sweet, and it starts to burn a little bit. The second bite, this is a slow burn, but when it right. when it hits you, it is beating the shit out of your face. And I'm swigging my Diet Dr. Pepper. I got a beer in this hand. I'm swigging that, swirling around. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Get some milk. I'm lactose intolerant. Shut up. But, you know, finally, everything calms down. Bill lactose intolerant. You're fucking old. I've been lactose intolerant <laughs> since I was nine years old, so... I love I love ice cream. I love a lot of dairy products. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of chocolate milk, but I pay for it. Oh yeah, but in the end, let's go back literally. to well. Speaking of in the end, well, give it give me the update how that is tomorrow because it's called shit your pants. Well, I didn't shit my pants, but I'll tell you what, I've never smoked myself out of a room. <laughs> and that night, trying to go to sleep, and, <laughs> what the who what the what, what's under the bed? Come here, hey hey hey, get out of there. I thought the cat came in and killed something. No, it was me smoking myself out. I now, when I go home tonight, am going to wash the sheet, the fitted sheet, the comforter, the pillowcases. I might repaint the walls <laughs> because I woke up and it was still hanging in the air. But that's, if I'd have eaten that wing 10, 20 years ago as a young man, no problem. I'm going to march right through it and I'm not going to have this problem. It, it worked <clears throat> fast and I did stink. But again, you, you can th think of something you can, you eat now that tears you up inside. But twenty years ago, you you could eat it by the bucketful. All all the hot food that I enjoy. Yeah, same here. For me, it's garlic. I used to Ooh. roast garlic bulbs in the stove in a little clay <clears throat> pot. There, rub it on toast, rub it on like French bread, eat it all day long, no problems. If I have pasta with sauce that has too much gar garlic in it or i eat just a garlic based dish pizza especially i'm on the shitter within an hour it just tears me up and goes right through me so i actually brought it to my doctor's attention when i hit about 32 33 please consult your doctor before <laughs> trying garlic <laughs> side effects may be <laughs> flatulence <laughs> Shitting yourself in the frozen food aisle at Stop and Shop. <clears throat> and the doctor says something that kind of made a lot of sense to me at the time. Is that you have to remember that garlic contains an enzyme that, number one, creates the fragrance and the flavor. And when you smash it up or cook it, it releases that enzyme. The younger you are, the more tolerable, tolerable your gut is to that enzyme. Easy for you to say. And the older you get, 
the less tolerant you become to that enzyme. He's like, so basically your body's telling you, fucking stop, dude. <laughs> stop poisoning myself, yourself with this, with this in foreign, foreign uh, no, intruder. No, stop poisoning yourself. If you're going to go, go with a smile, man. Eat all the garlic. Yeah, but I wasn't smiling. I was like retching. Do it like Paul Cicero and cut it with a razor blade and then do a little <sighs> oil and liquefies in the pan. Okay, good fellas. You got that right. <clears throat> no, but I would, I would eat it. I used to eat it raw. My grandfather grew, grew garlic in his in his garden, and he, he, I would just peel, pop out a bulb, eat it raw, no problem. That explains a lot. <laughs> it really does. And I told the doctor that, and he's like, well, that could be part of the issue is because you built the tolerance very young, but as you get older, you, you're you not keeping up with that regimen. So welcome to your 30s. Your body's going to change. You're going to... Your body's going to be less tolerant to shit that what you were tolerant in your teens and early 20s. Like, there's some some beers I, can, I can't drink anymore because of the yeast. There's some um, Belgian ales that have that have active yeast in the bottle. Ooh, I hate those. I love them. Oh, I love them. I love them. I, 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 uh, you ever get that that little yeast clump in your... In, oh, no. No. So, no. I'll try no. to pour... Uh, as I got older, I would try to pour pour the beer where the yeast would kind of settle at the bottom, but that one little clump would come out. And the next morning, it was shit as little jo- Jones on the fucking toilet because mm. that yeast. Just okay, w- let me give you right su- let me let me give you a suggestion. One old person to another, if you're gonna pour yourself a mug or a glass or a snifter of this beer, why not pour it through one of them little uh, cocaine strainers? <laughs> You know, you know the kind of talk. You're a chef. What do you call the little ones? A little sieve. Yeah, a little yeah, a sieve. sieve or a colander. And it'll catch all the fucking yeast on the way down. It's right over the top. You're going to get all the beer wonderfulness, none of the, oh, listen to me, I sound like a commercial, all the beer flavor and none of the yeast. <laughs> none of the flatulence the next day. By flatulence Belgian ale. <laughs> Produced by Omegon. That's one of the beers that, yes. that, unfortunately, I can't drink anymore because it's, even if I even if I put it through a sieve, if there's any of that yeast in, in the liquid... It, it's doomsday for You're my ass. Jones. It's doomsday for my ass the next day. Speaking of doomsday for the ass, Mike had one while we were on break because all of us old fucks, we went to the bathroom. We had to, to go to the bathroom. We had to take a leak at the same freaking time. It was like a train. <laughs> Does anybody else enjoy mowing the lawn as much as I do now? Always have. I, I love fucking it. love it. I'm Hank Hill when it comes like, to the lawn. I couldn't stand mowing the fucking lawn when I had to do it and was made to do it, mm-hmm. but now... <clears throat> it's just me. Oh yeah, and the tractor, and the beer. You want to hear something sick? I don't have a lawn. I live in a condo. I mow other people's lawns <laughs> for money voluntarily. And they're like, "You, we hate this. You want to do it? Yeah, for money. Uh huh. Money, sex, drugs, guns. I don't give a fuck. Just let me get out there with my headphones. And I love the push mower. So I'm out there doing different patterns every time. I want them to come home and have this lawn experience. And I want to stand in the alley with Boomhauer and the other guys. And like, yep, that's one of the best damn lawns I ever put down. I'll tell you what. But no, you're right. absolutely right. Mowing the lawn is like a religious experience for us right now. It is beautiful. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take Mike's point because he's going to do it again. We know at our age where every bathroom in the store is. Our, we, we scope it out like exits at a concert. And you guys used to laugh at me for looking around, one there, one there. What are you doing? Finding the exits. My granddad always told me, find the exits wherever you go. You want to get out alive. <laughs> if anything were to ever happen, and I know where all the bathrooms are, and I'm on the road a lot, so I stop at different places sometimes to use their facilities. I know where every bathroom is. And, and I give Walmart a lot of credit. They're strategic. One in the front, one in the back, one on the side. But you go to a place like our local stop and shop here in Norwich, Connecticut, and I believe the Montville one is the same way. There's only one that you can access, and it's by the deli. Right. So you're tootling along. You've got your Fruity Pebbles, and you get your bread, and you're all the way down in Frozen Foods, and you're getting your beef and bean burritos, and all of a sudden, bloop, <laughs> and the gurgle starts. You now have to haul ass 15 aisles back through the produce, by the deli, park your park your cart, you tell the guy behind the deli, can you watch my buggy? I just have to. And he goes, I know. Just go. <laughs> it's literally a code you, brown. You, you were here last month. Just do it and clean up after yourself this time, please. Spell your name on the wall if you want to get creative. 
But yeah, in the store when and, and Mike brought it up. It's when, true. When it's you have true. children like Mike and I do, you know where the bathrooms are because you never know when a three year old's gonna go, Daddy, it's time. Fuck. Come on, let's go to the bathroom. You know where but, the bathrooms are in every store yep. in town. Yeah. Well, Megan always uh, busts my stones about. I'll shit anywhere. Same. And she she's like she's not a public pooper. That's at fine. All. <laughs> That's fine. I've known people like that. She's They'll like, wait till they get home to unleash the beast. And and you know to a certain extent I agree with her. When I gotta go, I gotta go. So I can tell I can rate from one star to five stars. From Dayville to Westerly, down 395 Corridor, 95 Corridor, down to Westerly, the best bathrooms in Connecticut. Why don't you just sign off on the paper behind the door? The best bathrooms are at Yankee Stadium. Don't start. They are, they are amazing, though. Uh, did we they tell are, that story on the air? They are clean. The new Yankee Stadium is clean. The new Yankee Stadium is fantastic. I'm glad you got to see it. Uh, but uh, You motherfucker. But there was actually an app. A couple, uh, I want to say five, six years ago, it was a toilet app. Oh my god! And it would use your GPS to an app de- for everything to determine where you were. You would allow it to always use your GPS, uh huh. And you would punch, pull up the app. You gotta take a shit. It would see where you are geographically, and recommend based on star rating, the best bathroom in the area. I'm glad. I, I wish we had video. Do you, do you see this face? Yeah, I do. This that's is how the, I know I'm the, old. The fuck face. The fuck. This, that's how I know I'm old. What is it? RateMyShitter.com or something? I, I don't remember. It is, this was on like four iPhones iPhones ago. Um, <laughs> but I th- I thought it was fucking funny as shit. I thought literally. rate my poop was bad. Now it's rate my shitter. <laughs> it. This, this it, is where society is going. I know. <laughs> Well, we, we're all dependent on this little brick that we carry in our pockets or our, on our hip or whatever. So you know what? If there's an app for it, fuck it. I now have to look this up. As, as much as I'm on the road, I want to be able to rate your shitter. You know, Lynch Compound, Oakdale, Connecticut. Everything was clean. Toilet flushes slow. Uh, three out of five. Yeah. Would, rec- this, would 70 recommend. Th- 73 people have shit here at Lynch <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And you, you Five laugh. Of your friends have visited that shitter too. You fucking laugh, but that they, they would give a, a a amount of people that had used that restroom, and, and what rating they gave it. Oh my lord! I mean, that's how you know you're old. Um, Mildred, this, you, this bathroom has a, a five star rating, but there's only three people who've pooped there. What do you think? <laughs> it's a I'll new take bath- my chances. Yeah, right. Five stars is five stars, <clears throat> man. Well, I'm a terrible passenger <laughs> because, like, every half an hour, forty five minutes. Megan, I got to pee. You're old. Can you hold it? No. Oh, that's my wife. She I, has the bladder of a flea. I am, I am <laughs> the complete opposite. I will I hold do it. Not. I'm going to get maximum mileage out of this. I'm a camel. Yeah. I'm not. Same. Number one, I'm diabetic. So Makes and I, sense. And All I right. drink a lot of water throughout my day. Yeah, I can drive to like Daytona Springs and literally stop to pee twice. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I, that's two dozen stops on, along the way and before it sucks. I even get it, out of I'll fucking... T- I'll tell you this right now. It sucks having a daughter. Because when she's got to pee, she's got to pee. Yeah. And on top of that, now that a year and change ago, um, the the thing started happening. Yes. Yeah, that's even worse. Red Tide. Yeah. The evil. <laughs> Aunt Flo. Aunt Flo. Oh, but, you know, but going back, like what Mike said, if I'm on a car trip, I am maximizing miles. If I have a passenger, I do have to kind of play the game. But you're going in, and on your way out, you're bringing me a Coke. Because... I had to stop for you. I didn't have to stop for us as a group. I'll make a compromise in that respect. But hey, what, hey I'm I gotta take yeah, a, I gotta take a stop. Yeah, pretty I, much. I gotta take a piss. What do you need? Now I gotta pass all those fucking people I just passed on the highway again. <laughs> again. Exactly. And when you have a car that is adorned with the business that I have on it, that didn't he just pull off at the Vince Lombardi truck stop? <laughs> yeah. You know, and here he is again. And he's stopping at the Molly Pitcher one. Jesus Christ, he's got the bladder of a <laughs> of a sparrow. Jesus. It sucks. Although I like bladder of a flea. That is good. That is good. I might use that. I gave you a new one today, and now you have given me a new one. What was uh, the new one? I don't want to call you a pussy, but your lips are showing. <laughs> yeah, that was and if I, tickle your for- if, if I tickle your forehead, you know what I found. I am the clit commander. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody. When you look at me, you think of the clit. 
We're going to have movie episodes coming up. I am the face of the clip. All right, we we may as well talk about movies because you and I had a conversation about streaming and you are now... Netflix, don't listen to this. You are now a part of my Netflix. Right, right. I... I've never signed on to it to see what you've watched. I don't care. But you said, and, and this goes to being old, I do a lot of the same thing. If you were to look at my streaming, you would find... Um, History Channel, a um, Documentaries. The Smithsonian Channel, TLC. Um, I basically only watch local network news for local information, and I don't I do a lot of research on the internet with credible sources and don't follow a lot of the mainstream like nightly new national news except Nora O'Donnell yeah. mm, that's a woman mm, right there Nora. yes ma'am remember okay stop this is how you can tell we're old when we were young and we were we had the apartment and I get off of work at o dark 30 in the morning I would put on the today show and she was 25, 30 at the time. And boy, Katie Couric, man. Ooh, that was a woman. Now I'm nearing 50, and I, I stare at this 48-year-old woman on the screen, and I think, man, the things I would do to her. But I don't do it with the chick from Channel 8 who is Miss Connecticut three, four years ago, uh, Taglia. Yes, uh, I can't remember her name. but I can't remember her first name, but... That is a beautiful woman, but I don't sit there and go, boy, you know, uh-huh. No, I look at 48-year-old Nora O'Donnell and go, man, just come to Papa. <laughs> come on. I've been watching Hoarders on, like, Binge lately. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's, it's amazing how the older you get, the older you will allow yourself to look at and find it. All of a sudden... She's fifty, right? Well, for every like for every like twenty years ago, dude, she's fifty. Spoke on Miley Cyrus uh, earlier. For every Miley now Cyrus, dude, there's an Eva Longoria. Now it's dude, she's yeah. fifty. Yeah. yeah, I know. Okay, um, <laughs> even though her face looks like Frankenstein now, ten years ago, Catherine Bach still looked good from the Dukes of Hazard. Now she's you know sixty eight, almost seventy. She's looking her age, and that's not a bad thing. She's still a beautiful woman. But ten years ago at fifty eight, ooh, she was still wow. But look at some of the, again, some of the actresses that we see now. They're getting up there in age. Not like, you know, they're not dragging and sagging, but they still look beautiful. And we look at them in a different way now. Well, look at Jamie Lee Curtis. I'd rather not. How old is she now? 104. Still. I give somebody like her a lot of credit because she hasn't had work done. She's aged within her good point wheel, wheelhouse and not gone out and gotten nip tucked sucked and fucked or whatever you want to call and it you can tell some of the people that have been nip tucked and sucked even in their 30s and you're like why why okay so on november 22nd of this year jamie lee curtis will turn 63 years old and in this picture i'm just going to show it around the room she really is you're right on this one she's still a beautiful she's still, woman. she still looks right, right, good right, right, right. she looks good <laughs> right um <clears throat> help me out with the name uh, grumpier old men. Uh, oh, the Italian. Uh, yes. Uh, Sophia Loren. Yes. 109 years old. Maybe 112. No, that was. Still uh, looks good. And Margaret. And Margaret. And, Mar- and, Margaret. and Margaret could be n- 90. Methuselah and look good. But I think it was Sophia. They both look great. Yes. And you look at those movies, and those movies came out in the 90s when we were young men, and they were already in their 50s and 60s, and you're like, oh, and Margaret, I'll give you a bus ticket. Just come on down. Come on well, down. You're the next contestant on Ride the Baloney Pony, baby. <laughs> uh, Rita Moreno. West Side Story. Beautiful in a different way, but I I, I like where you're going with this. It, it, and aged well. Aged very well. She Who did they George... have brought back for... Uh, 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 I believe Spielberg is producing that again. What's that? Um, West, Side Story. West Side Story. Oh, really? Yeah, Spielberg's going to do it. Um, big and huge. And they've brought Rita Moreno back to for a role in that okay she was in the original like i saw that the other day okay. very interesting and you know not for nothing she's been dead for some years now but um rue mcclanahan aged well dude mm-hmm. and looked good Look almost at, almost to the day she died betty white betty white's a, ageless she's looked 50 she since a, she was 12 she is a national treasure and she was beautiful in her oh, yeah. 20s and 30s oh, yeah. did she you watch a, that betty white documentary we did we just watched megan and i watched that the other night and 
I was like, holy shit, she See, was a beautiful woman. 20 years ago, when, when Chris yo, and I Betty met, White was hot. Yeah. we were like, yo, did you watch a Bruins game? Hey, how about that slasher flick? You just hear us now? Hey, did you see the Betty White documentary? Oh, my God. <laughs> We're speaking, fucking old. Speaking of which, let me let me throw out to you, because you gave the suggestion. <clears throat> if any of you guys have Amazon Prime, watch the Val Kilmer documentary. Thank you for suggesting that. Fan-fucking-tastic. And it, it's a very sad story to see what he's gone through in the last yep. 15 years. And I watched Wonderland yesterday for the first time ever. Not, he, did a, he did a fantastic job. Not a bad movie. He, he's, he, he did the best with what he was given. I think he, he, he nailed the role. Um, just, just, for, uh, just for shits and giggles, I got to tell you, I peed next to John, Holm, John Holmes once. He cried. Because <laughs> it was so small? Or? No. He was, he was crying for I had you. to like stand way back from the toilet and stuff. Way back. <laughs> Water's cold. Deep, too. Deep, too. <laughs> but no, so these um, two old boys peeing off a bridge. <laughs> Kaplunk. Let us not oh, get into the Okay, plunk. here we go. Another thing as a middle aged man. I prefer I, I prefer the term or, or, seasoned. Whatever. Is it me or does anybody under the age of thirty look twelve? Oh, on uh, let me go one step further. When we were twelve, everybody looked sixty. Look at a baseball card of say Don Mattingly or George Brett. And they were 28 years old, and they looked old. Old, and now they're like, dude, who's the kid? I on watched the, the world. Yeah, I watched the World Series. They're like, this kid just turned 30. I'm like, that kid looks like he just walked off the bus from middle school. Now you bring up a very good point. When we were in our teen, I'm going to say preteen years, mm-hmm. and you look back at your grandparents' photos, your aunts and uncles' photos, kids at 16, 17 looked like they were already 40 years old. I'll take you one deeper. Anybody who was who was a teen or an adult in the 40s, everybody looked the same. Everybody had the same face. You couldn't tell grandpa from Uncle Jed, m- mom from Aunt Thelma. Nope. Everybody had the same face, the same, same dress, haircut. the same haircut. They all Every- dressed the same. It was, it was the same it, torpedo bra. It was leave it to Beaverland. <laughs> yeah, well, so, so, so white, white and plaid shirt. Everybody looked like Barbara Billingsley. So what, cha- what has changed in the last, say, 40, 50 years that... Teenagers actually look like teenagers now. Uh huh. Into oh, all right. I'll say somebody sixteen. I can mistake for maybe being twenty. I've done that. Okay. <clears throat> but when you looked at your family photos from their era, they all looked old. Yeah. Look at pictures of our folks from the seventies. They look. They look fucking old. Maybe it's because everybody smoked three packs a day in the house, and uh, well, yeah. The also Surgeon got- General recommended. Remember those old ads. My doctor recommended Winston. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> My doctor recommended. That's why everybody everybody had that one on that was sitting at the table like, all right, so your uncle and I were thinking, as we go to the lake this year, you're going to ride with us instead of your parents. It, they were chain smoking. The whole house had a fog. And don't get me started on 70s fashion because everybody dressed like a fucking tablecloth. And your seatbelt was your mom putting her arm across your chest when she slammed on the brakes. There was no car yep. seat. And there we was- survived. Oh, and if there was, it was a cushion with a metal bar. With the yeah. metal bar. Yep. Looked, you it, remember. It, 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 it looked no different than a clip to the table high chair. Yeah. Like when you go to a restaurant, does your child need a booster seat? Here we go. And we're going to put the thing over the top. And My wife tells a story about it when she was, uh, I would say, like six, seven years old and her brothers were a couple of years older. They would put the four of them in the back of the Volvo station wagon. Yes. And just window down. And just station wagon. And they would slide around the back, beating each other up, yep. getting beat the, the piss beat out of them. No seat. Mm-hmm. You do that today, you're going to court. My friend Scott had a cut on his head one time. And this is a true story. And Scott is on a plane right now coming back from Dallas. I, I, and if he wants to verify this story, he can. I'll reach out to him was helping his dad take a mattress to the dump. And they put the mattress in the back of his dad's pickup. And Mobile they, they, they start watching the thing flapping in the rear view. And he goes, Scott, get back there and hold the mattress down. So Scott gets back there. Starfish on the mattress holding this down. He's got two hands, one hand on either side of the uh, truck bed to hold on. Hits a bump. Scott goes ass over tea kettle out of the truck. <laughs> Falls onto the pavement, gets a little cut on his head. He wasn't injured too, too bad. He's had some scrapes and bruises and shit. Wore that like a badge. 
heaven forbid, like you said, if somebody did that today, DCF would be there in nine seconds to take your child and put you in jail. You know how you're old, Chris? How? You said ass over tea kettle. Yeah, I love that term. <laughs> I'll say stuff, and Megan will call me out all the time about it. I'll say something old timey like that, and she'll just look at me and go, "All right, Larry." I still call you guys all call them carriages. I call them buggies. I still do to this day. Or wagon? No, a wagon you drag behind you. That's right. There's a difference. A buggy goes in front. Of, well, unless you're a horse and buggy, even then, sometimes buggies in the front, dudes in the whatever. It's a buggy. It's not a fucking carriage. A carriage is different. It's got a cover on it. Grocery cart. You you go through you go My through the Midwest with it. It's for hire. Senora. <laughs> My handsome cab is for, for hire. As long as you desire. Senorita. Senorita. We're, We're gonna run. Forget the mañana. to me. <laughs> In my Cuban cavalry. All right. And there's our, <laughs> yeah, there's our Jesse and Ez tribute. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Lucy. How would you like to fuck me up the ass? <laughs> Also an Eddie Murphy trip. <laughs> yes, yes, thank God, Eddie Murphy. All right, so do we got anything else on how old we are and what makes us? How about what makes us feel old? You you kind of did one, but I want another one. What makes you feel old? I don't know. I mean, um, speaking from my heart right now, nothing. I've lost sixty pounds. Fantastic! In the, like, you look the great. Last two and a half months. Cocaine's um, a hell of a drug. Cocaine is a hell of a drug, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. Cocaina. Um, you know, look like John Holmes before you know it. <laughs> but th- that's what was making me feel old was carrying around the extra weight, just feeling sluggish and <clears throat> everything was hurting. And 60 pounds gone later, things are not hurting or feeling <clears throat> any way close to that. So. <clears throat> I guess the only thing that makes me feel really old is watching my kids grow. Yes. Um, and, and not all the time, just from time to time, there's moments that I'm like, holy shit, they're, they're old. Yeah. They're, they're, I look at your kids, like and I don't feel adults. old. I'm like, they're, they're getting older. I'm still the same. And then, you know, when your dipshit son, I love you to death, Travis, how are you today? You know, says something about, you remember when your hair wasn't gray? Like, fuck you, dude. Come on, and, and he is—he's he, grown up to be quite the man. But I still look at him and see that fat-faced kid. I still understand him as a man, but right, I right. still see that face, bearded or not. That yeah. beard hides his childlike face. Yeah, no, I still see the two-year-old yeah. with the pearls and shit, and so. the and the tattoo of New Jersey on his upper arm. Right, right. He's got a birthmark that looks like New Jersey. Oh, nice. So. Um, yeah, with the kids, I look at my daughter, I'm like, where the fucking time go? Well, I, I look at my nieces and nephews, uh, <clears throat> my brother-in-law, Greg's, his two kids are down in Florida at college. And just to think that 2001, 2002, 2003, they weren't even a thought yet. Yeah. And here they are off at college doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And then like my friend Rob's kid, Mackenzie. She's like blossoming into a, a woman. It's not, she's about the same age as Emma. Mm-hmm. And it's not, I look at her and I still see compact kid. Yep. I don't see, and it. I, I, I'll just walk in the house and she'll say something or we'll have a conversation about something. And I'm like, holy fucking shit, I'm old. Yeah. Um, having back injuries, like I mentioned, since I'm 25, uh, tying my shoes makes me feel old. I got to pop that shit up onto, I got the the bed posts at the bottom. I hike that some bitch up, which I can still do. I don't have to like help it. Put it up on the arm of the couch. Yep. yep. Same do, thing. But back I in the go, day, you just bend over, you tie your shoes, you go. Now I'm like, okay, I gotta put this motherfucker right here. Well, now you have to you have to like have a strategy. How are you, what shoes are you gonna wear? Mm-hmm. Are they slip on? Are they tie up? How are you gonna attack this t- task before you go to work? Yeah, in the it, it's basically a blueprint of okay. <laughs> I've got to get these motherfuckers on my feet. How am I going to... And i got to be out of the house in five gonna, minutes. You, you, you make sure that they're wide open, the laces are loose, so you can slide your feet in, and then you go to the tightening and tying. Whereas back in the day, you just sit there, bloop, and you do it all in like 30 seconds. The, the now you, you have to have a game plan. The day you have to go for an extended shoehorn, like one of the three <laughs> motherfuckers, that's when you know you're really old. Now, I feel that way. There are some days where I just... It's a struggle to get up out of bed, right? Between arthritis and diabetes and all the so, other all the other shit I've gone through in the last five years. Do you do like I do and wake up in sections? 
basically. Okay, this arm feels good. We're going to yep. just push here. The so, back feels great. I'm going to roll this way. One foot on the ground. Here we go. So you're, I, talk, you're basically your favorite cheerleader. You can do this. You're, you're <laughs> getting out of bed in the morning and walking to the bathroom and talking to your knee like, really? This is how <laughs> yeah. you're going to start the day? Come on. You got to work. Or you're, with, you're, you got to work with me here. Yeah. Your lower back is like... <clears throat> regretting the fact that you have to sit down and take a crap in the morning. Yeah, and then, you know, maybe that but crap do, doesn't come out well, and you're like, are you serious? Yeah, and then and your back sudden, weeks. Four, four Advil have to be taken in the morning with coffee, or your day just doesn't function. Go get you some Blue Emu, man. But it I works wake, fast, and you won't stink. <laughs> and you won't stink. But I do the same thing. The first thing in the morning, I, I lift my... Guys can't see this, but I lift my arms up, flex my hands, bend my elbows, then I roll over, kind of try to sit up, and then once you sit up, you're like, all right, I think I, I, think I can do this. Right. I think I can finish this process. And, I, and I'm pretty sure all of us, as we're getting ready to wind down and wish you well for the next week and invite you back next week, I'm pretty sure all of us sitting at this table are glad that every morning, whether it's Chris Jr., Lynch Jr., or Mike Jr., is, is greeting you every morning. And you're like, I'm still, a, I, I'm still there, guys. Well, and... and here, here's the thing. When my dad was my age, 49, to me, he looked old. Yeah. Me at 49, yep. I feel like, I still feel like a 20-year-old. Yeah. At certain times. So age is just a number. It's how you deal with that number and how you attack it day to day. And go th- battle through your bullshit and just... Live your, live your best life. Couldn't agree more. And guys, if you want to chime in on the subject, it is junction dysfunction at gmail.com. Tell us if you're a man in his 40s or older, what are some of the trials and tribs you go through? If you're a young person, ask us questions about what do I have to look forward to? Or if you're a woman who just needs help because you think you know everything, let us help you. <laughs> Amazing show, boys. Thanks again. You know, tune in each and every week. Give us a five-star rating wherever you get this podcast from. It only helps. And tell your friends. If you had a good time listening today, tell them they should get on and listen to us. For Chris and Mike, I'm Chris, and we are out.